For the last couple weeks, we've been road tripping around Nova Scotia, checking out its scenic drives, seeing beautiful fall foliage, experiencing city life, and wandering around charming historic towns. And for our final adventure, we're at Kejimakujik National Park, or Keji for short. This park is split into two units, a seaside unit and an inland unit. In our last video, we checked out the seaside unit, which has a gorgeous white sand beach and crystal clear water. But for the next 24 hours, we're heading inland to Kejimakujik Lake for our first ever backcountry canoe camping trip. And not only is it our first time canoe camping, but it's our dog Kona's first time ever in a canoe. So it should be a pretty memorable experience. So canoe camping is a fail. To be honest, that was a very miserable and stressful experience for us. All right, we've got our backcountry permit. Now let's go get our canoe. We rented our canoe from Why Not Adventure, which is located in the park and right on the water, so it's super convenient. We got one of their 16-foot canoes, and we have a lot of stuff to load in there. It kind of looks like we're going for a week, but we're only going for one night, but Adam has assured me that it will all fit. Adam was right. It all fit, no problem. Plenty of room. <laughs> Tons of room. We could have brought more things. <laughs> Since Kona was able to come with us, we were able to rent her a doggy life jacket. We have a feeling she's gonna absolutely hate it. <laughs> An adventure dog. <laughs> this is gonna be an adventure. <laughs> There are 47 different backcountry sites spread out among 17 lakes, and tonight we're gonna to be camping at site number 20 on Kejimakujik Lake. I believe it's about a 5.5 kilometer paddle, so we think it's gonna take us about two to three hours. I am so pumped for this trip. We've been dreaming about it all summer long, and it's finally here, we're finally doing it. Kona is not loving it so far. She's crying a lot, but thankfully she is sitting still and being calm and not just flailing around. I think she's gonna to learn to like it. So you may notice that we are missing a furry friend in the canoe. And that is because Kona absolutely hated it. We knew she wasn't going to love it at first, but we thought she would calm down a bit as we kept paddling, but she was just getting worse and worse and worse. She was crying so loudly, she was shaking, she was just super unhappy. And in hindsight, we probably should have taken her on a smaller canoe adventure to see if she liked canoeing, but we just don't often have access to a canoe. So for the sake of her happiness and anxiety, as well as our own, because to be honest, that was a very miserable and stressful experience for us, we have decided to cancel our canoe camping trip. We're obviously very, very bummed out about it because as Adam mentioned, we've been looking forward to this for months, but it just didn't feel fair to torture her for hours today as well as tomorrow, as well as torture ourselves. We're just kind of bummed out right now, but we're gonna try to redeem the day. So canoe camping is a fail, but as you can see, we're still in the canoe. We dropped Kona off back at the van where she's happiest. And since we have the canoe for the day, we're gonna paddle out to our site anyways, make a fire, hang out, maybe make a meal, and then we'll paddle back and then take it from there. For centuries, the Mi'kmaq recreated in the area now known as Kejimakujik National Park. And the name Kejimakujik means little fairies in their language. And as we paddled across the lake, it was easy to see why. This place has a whimsical and magical feeling about it, even in very choppy conditions at times. This wind is no joke. At times there are white caps on this water. It is a workout trying to paddle in this wind right now.
Welcome to site number 20, which would have been our home for the night, but even though we're not camping here tonight, we still wanted to give you a quick tour so you can see what the backcountry sites are like here. And man, this site is amazing. It's located in a cove with its own private beach with no one else around. And then when you walk up into the campsite, there's a picnic table and a fire pit, plus two tent pads. And then the best part, we have our own bathroom, which is so cool. So let's go check it out. This is the royal throne. It's just a pit toilet, so nothing crazy, but that's not too bad. The closer you go in, the more it smells, but this is so cool that they actually offer this here. We've done a lot of backcountry camping where there is no toilet or it's just like a toilet out in the open with zero privacy. So to actually have like a full on structure like this is super neat, but I got a piece, so I'm gonna go use it. There's even toilet paper in there. We brought a bunch of toilet paper and I don't think there's always toilet paper so you shouldn't count on it, but there are two rolls of toilet paper in there. Man, this is the nicest backcountry site that we have ever been to. Another handy feature of this campsite is this food storage pulley system. So it'll keep your food safe from any predators. So you hang your food on this guy, on this clip here, and then you just pull it on up, pull it on up. And then you got this other loop here and this just clips to the tree right there and your food is safe from any bears or raccoons or anything Squirrels. anything that's out here trying to get your food <laughs> one final amazing perk of this campsite is that they actually provide firewood but we're here at the very end of the season so we didn't feel super confident that there'd be any firewood left the people last night actually left some so we would have lucked out but just to be safe we brought our own firewood and normally you're not allowed to transport wood into the park but you can if it's this kiln dried firewood in this plastic bag but it is so cold out so we got to get a fire going We brought some backpacking meals for lunch, so we've got some warm meals next to a warm fire. And it's funny, yesterday we were in tank tops and t-shirts, and today it is 30 degrees colder. We got two jackets on. This would have been an incredible spot to camp, but we have to get back to Kona, so we're gonna put out the fire, pack up, and hit the water. I'm the muscle today, baby. All right, ready? I can't. Bye, we're so sad to leave you. We'll be back the next time we're spending the night with you. We've accomplished the canoeing part of the canoe camping trip. Now let's do the camping part. As soon as we knew that our backcountry canoe camping dreams were dead, we booked a front country campsite at the Jeremy's Bay Campground. That way we can still camp inside of the park tonight. And it's a really, really nice campsite and very quiet. There's hardly anyone here and we're right on the lake. So it's almost the same. <laughs> Since we could lug more gear on the canoe, we planned on making a proper meal over the fire and we're sticking with that plan. We whipped up some burgers and some potatoes and it looks super good. This beats the heck out of dehydrated food. Mm.
don't you worry. We're also making some dessert and we're making one of our favorite campfire desserts, which I guess we'll call apple cobbler wrapped in foil. So basically what I did is I cut up a bunch of Granny Smith apples and then I cut up tiny little pieces of butter and sprinkled them throughout and then I drizzled some maple syrup and then I put a bunch of cinnamon on top and I'm gonna wrap it up in the foil and then we're gonna put it on the fire. We let it sit on the fire for about eight minutes or so until we could hear it bubbling inside. Let's see how it looks. Oh, it's so just gooey in there and juicy. So what I do next is I just pour it into a bowl so it's easier to eat. And then to kind of be like a crumble on the top, we put some granola. Gives it a nice little crunch. And then since ice cream would have been too hard to take out on the canoe, we have whipped cream to top it and give it just like a nice creamy sweetness. All right, it's ready. <laughs> That's the stuff right there. Mm. raining outside right now so I'm not gonna lie it's nice to wake up in our warm and dry van right now instead of the tent <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> mm -hmm. Since we have a bit more time this morning in the park than we planned, we're gonna hike the Mills Falls Trail, which should be a nice, easy stroll along the Mersey River. Well, our time in Keji didn't quite go as we planned, but we still got to experience most of what we came here for just in a slightly different way, and we still had a ton of fun. But for the rest of the day, we have a lot of driving ahead because we are <laughs> we are heading back to New Brunswick because tomorrow we are crossing back into the US. But before we do, we have one final spot in Canada that we want to check out. <laughs> 